I'd like to see a cut fill map. Where is cut, where is fill, and what does that look like? So this is uh, fairly straightforward. Once you have two surfaces, the cut fill map measures the difference between the two surfaces, whether it's positive cut or negative fill. And we do that like this, save as, regular grid. And I've already got one here, so I'm just going to call this uh, cut fill map number two. I don't want to write over my existing one. The important thing here is that I want to measure the, dis the difference between two surfaces. The foreground, I haven't even named it yet, so it's just called untitled, is surface number one. And the background, original ground, is surface number two. Now, the top part of this um, is a, a little bit complicated because um, by default, it gives you 10,000 points, 100 by 100. And the size of each uh, grid cell is, well, it's not random. It's actually based on the size of the model. So um, I'm just going to override the defaults here and change these to nice round numbers. Change these to nice round numbers. So there I've, I've um, told it to export a rectangular grid starting at this corner. Um, and if I if I put 100 points on each um, side of my grid, I end up with two meter spacing. So let's change that to 200. So I've got one meter spacing. OK, done. I'm going to open this in a new file. And there are all my points. Um, oh, it's interesting. It kept all the windows from the old file. I don't need those. The 3D view is pretty flat. Um, come on, zoom extents. There it is. That's my cut fill map. It looks kind of like the elevation of the pond because we've subtracted the elevation of the pond from the original ground or vice versa. Um, but it's not exactly that. Uh, let's contour this thing. Now these are grid points that are one meter apart, so I don't want to include all. I just want to include triangles that are um, just under two meters long. Uh, that way I won't get crossing triangles in my concave section, or long triangles, sorry. OK. Do I need contours? No, because. I'm going to show you the cut fill map in colors instead. So uh, make a surface. There it is. Um, and I don't need to look at all these points. They're not giving me any information. I'll just hide them. Disable, displayed, no, apply. Of course, they don't disappear until they're not selected there. That's better. OK. And now I'm going to turn on shading for my surface. So plan option shading, elevation. And you can see that we go between basically um, minus 7 and plus 6, let's say plus or minus 7 meters. So I'll go from minus 7 up to 0. And I'll make the. Uh, the minus seven, those are my cuts. We'll make those green. And at the bottom, I want dark green. And when it's almost not cutting anymore, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I want a nice light green. So I can choose which color I want. Um, and the number of intervals I want, and the station and the elevation range I want in the shading intervals dialog. Um, and there they are. 
Let's do that one more time. Click on Auto Gen. Now I'm doing the fill side. So let's go from 0 up to 7. And I'll use red for fill. And again, near 0, instead of using bright red, I'm going to use a washed out red. So my custom color button, the plus button there, allows me to change that color. OK. Uh, and they got added on the other side. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. There's my cut fill map. Thank you.